All right, thanks for staying with us now. Greatness truly starts with a vision. And when you think about Nigeria, you will realize that the reason that we haven't attained the greatness that we so dearly seek is due to lack of vision. Having no clarity of vision of what we want to achieve as a country or people, uh, of course, of what we want to achieve as a country or people is more detrimental than we think. Because um, today uh, we have seen it play out in different stratas of you know our lives as a people so today we're asking is it possible um, to get visionary leadership in nigeria now please let's hear what you have to say ha today oh please we apologize it's my fault again the whatsapp number is not available but if you can go on our youtube and just drop a message i'll get that message and i'll read the message if you can go on our, our youtube you can also tweet at us at wish africa one with the hashtag wish show please leave us a message if you really want to leave us a message go on our youtube page for today um, all right, so Diola and um, Jennifer, Hilda Bachi, that's her popular stage <laughs> name, but she's Hilda Bassi F. Young, right? Um, so this young girl has had, I hear that she's had a vision for God knows how long. Mm. She's had that vision for a while, saying that, you know what, she, this is, these are the things she wants to do. And if you see, I met Hilda at um, a, a TV station that we were supposed to launch ways on, Pop Central TV. And immediately I saw her, I knew, okay, this person is really, really, first of all, she loves to cook. You know, she's, I mean, you can see her doing her show with so much smiles and all of that. She's somebody that loves what she does. And you know what? I, and um, when I got a message on WhatsApp saying that, oh, please support us, you know, and all of that, I, I was, you know, the next thing, the only thing I said to her was congratulations, because I already saw that it was going to be doable. I mean, she would achieve it. Um... You know, so one thing stood out for me when I was watching, because I went to the Amore Gardens yesterday. I also went there today. Unfortunately, today the crowd was, like, top of the... I couldn't even go close to, like, entering the, the, the building. But I went there yesterday, and when I saw her, I just saw someone that, you know what, had said, okay, you know what, I have a goal, and this is how I need to do it, and I need to put in the work, right? And so when you see people attain greatness, it's a no-brainer. Mm. When you see that these people, first of all, had the plan. I remember that I was going into a strategy session many years ago um, with some lady that taught us how to create. Because I love to, my, my sole purpose, apart from what I do, is vision, right? And I teach this vision to young children in schools, secondary schools. In fact, I'm really praying to God that I'm able to resume my school tours because those are the things that gives me joy. Um, the ability to put your vision in pictorial forms. So you cut out different papers, different words that comes to you. You put it on a board. It's called a vision, vision board. board. And you have that. You look mm. at it every day. And you say, you know what? I'm going to get this. So I remember the vision board I had created. I think it was in 2014 or 2015. I'm not sure. Or 2013. Now, when I look back at that vision board, like 90% of those things are already crossed out of it, right? Ways, so many things that had written down, it's already out of that. So when the, um, the story of the young girl saying that she wanted to, that the attempt to wanting to break a Guinness Book of rec Record, you know, first of all, she went, she counted the costs. Of course, you looked at, okay, what are the things? Who has done this before? Yeah. What am I up against? How many days? Then she did a dry run, you know. You know, she's done so many things. She put a team together. Yeah. And this team, small team, but very efficient team. They knew exactly what she needed. And today, the story is history. She is, I mean, we're just waiting for Guinness. Please do. <laughs> People are already telling Guinness Book of Record. Don't try us, so you know. Don't 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 play like INEC, right? But we are just waiting for the official announcement by the Guinness um, Book Book of uh, Records um, team, you know, because they also were monitoring, right? And it's a, mm. she's she's done it, and she did not only she she had actually set a goal of ninety six. She surpassed it. Now she's over a hundred, right? Hundred hours standing cooking. So, you see, when I saw this, I said, it is possible. But you see, anything is possible. We can become, Nigeria can become like a first-class country that is functional, mm. right? It can be possible. But it, first of all, starts with 
us telling ourselves that this is where we are going and we have that clarity that this is the vision mm. this is where we're going right so for me i just want us to discuss first of all what are your thoughts on hilda's achievements you know and do you think it is possible for us to begin to really get visionaries as leaders in this country mm. so i think um for hilda what she has just done is quite amazing i I mean, it's not easy to stand for that long. Even cooking for two hours, I get tired and I just want to sit. But looking at the plans that she put in place, you can see that she actually thought about the entire process and she did her due diligence. And that's the reason why she's here today. I mean, she thought about her fitness, got sponsors, thought about the location, what needs to be done, how she needs to get there and what she needs to achieve to get to that point. I mean, it's not easy. And I really congratulate her for that. What she has done is, is, is amazing. I feel like this is something people will think about for a long time time and then one thing i love about nigerians is we know how to support our Absolutely. own and people came out in mass the rain was heavy last night and people stood under the rain supporting her i mean there were times if you watch the video there were times where she was actually crying and you could tell that this lady is already tired. Nigerians started praying. Praying for her. They started Singing, praying. Encouraging she her. had an assistant that stood beside her all through, massaging her shoulder, cleaning her sweat, cleaning her tears. It, I, this just talks about, this is just discipline, dedication. And she had a picture in mind. This is what I want to achieve. And she has achieved it. Thank you. So congratulations, congratulations, Thank congratulations. You. I like the fact that you said she had a picture. Yeah. So there was clarity. See, eh? Until our vision as a nation is crystal clear. Yeah. Like we have clarity. This is who we want to be mm. as Nigerians. It's, it's impossible for us to get together to anywhere. Yeah. Now, there's something else you said, because I'll come to Diola. You said something around Nigerians. And this is what I want our leaders to really understand, right? The reason you find a lot of resistance with the Nigerians that you claim that, oh, especially the youth that you've called all of us, you know, the youth sees honesty and sincerity mm. in your vision, right? That is if you, if you have one. The kind of support you're going to get from the Nigerian youth, trust me, it will be unprecedented. Yeah. Because this girl, even the team, they did not plan the crowd. I said this afternoon at 3 p.m. when I got there, they were still trooping in. Mm. They did not plan for that crowd. All she did was she had a vision. Yeah. And she wanted to do this. And look at how Nigerians came out en masse to support it. Yep. So we are begging our leaders, set the vision in front of us. Give us a clear picture of what you want. And see Nigerians show up to make sure that that vision comes to life. Let me come to you, Diola. What's your thoughts on Hilda? Mm. And how do you think we can tie this to visionary leadership in Nigeria? Okay, so, um, I mean... The whole world celebrates Hilda and myself inclusive. I think she's she's done amazing. She, she has done an amazing job. Um, I like the part that um, we have all we have all said about having a vision, but it is not enough to have a vision. It is important that you have a plan to implement that vision, and I think that's always where a lot of people get it wrong. Sometimes, I mean, for a vision to, to work, you, it, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of hard work. It requires that you sit down, you think about the people, the resources, everything that you will need, you know, the, the whole chain to ensure that you give yourself the best possible chance for that vision to work. You know, but um, a lot of times our visions are very individualistic, especially when we are aiming very high. Now, for me, um, the biggest thing that I, I took from um, Hilda is um, she not only had the vision, she, ha she sold that vision to her team. Because you could tell that everybody was Conform. Everybody understood that, listen, this vision is not just Hilda's. It is for all of us. Hilda's win is our win. 
and everybody puts in their very best. And that, that's the work of visionary leadership. If you're a visionary and you cannot sell your vision, which most often times means that you need to put round pegs in round holes, you, if it takes you a long time to put the team together to ensure that this is done, you understand? Then, I mean, it will just all be dreams. Anybody can have a dream. In fact, I think all of us have dreams. But do we all have the passion, the resilience, the, the, the um, emotional intelligence, the skill, the competence, everything required to make sure that we actualize that dream? Hilda did not just dream. She put in the work. She, she put in long years. I mean, look at, look at how she had to get herself physically fit. That's someone who, who looked at all the possible scenarios. For her to be able to stand that long, it, 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 it was imperative for her to be at her optimal fitness. Because, I mean, if she was not healthy, there was no way she would have been, she would have been able to stand that long. If she was not prepared, she, she probably would have been running up and down looking for one ingredient or something would have just stalled her somehow. So for every plan A, she probably had a plan B, plan C, plan C, plan D or whatever. The most important thing was there was a vision, but there was an implementation map mm. that would guide her to ensure the actualization of that vision. Absolutely. That's what we need. Absolutely. And there, you, there's no way to have said it better than what you've just said. Yeah. Truth. Um, so um, it's beyond just having a vision. vision. There has to mm. be clarity, first of all. Mm. And there mm. has to be a proper plan right to the very last detail. Yeah. Would, would, mm. we, would we have surprises spring up on us? Of Definitely. course. Yeah. There will be unforeseen circumstances. But you see, the, the problem we have in this country is that the unforeseen circumstances seems to be a lot more, a lot more. at mm. every time. Because we have deadlines. We've, we've set mm. deadlines. Okay, the uh, Lagos Ibado Expressway will be completed X, Y, Z mm. in this year. Mm. This will be completed. The Niger Bridge, the second Niger Bridge will have power. We would sort out this. These are like vague, right? As far as I am concerned, they are vague promises because every promise that um, our leaders have made, we've seen a, a complete recycle. Mm. So if if um, if we bring out uh, Buhari's President Buhari's um, what's it called um, promises campaign promises, juxtapose that with what um, the president elect now has promised, you will see that they are almost similar almost in terms similar. of the. The, the things, the projects and all yeah. of that. Because why? A lot of times, these projects are just recycled, mm. right? There is mm. almost like there is zero intent yeah. of completion mm, of this basically. project. Yeah. So it is that, it is now that, um, what's it called? That distrust that makes it difficult for Nigerians to even say, you know what? They trust the process, mm. you know? They trust that, that these leaders truly have our interest at heart. Right, so mm. if we continue like this, it's going to be impossible for us to even grow, mm. you know, as a people. But you know what? Let's go on a break. When we come back from that break, um, we'll sort out. Um, no, we don't have any guests, but we'll, we'll continue the conversation. <laughs> Stay with us. <laughs> All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, if you just tuned in, we're discussing the, of course, um, Nigeria and the cost of lack of vision. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081. <laughs> There's no WhatsApp today. <laughs> Send us a message on YouTube or, or Twitter to us at Wisho Africa One with the hashtag Wisho. I apologize. I apologize. I apologize for the WhatsApp number today. All right, so I mean, ladies, um, so this conversation is something that, um, you know, uh, I want, because again, it, it's so quick for Nigerians to, especially I'm talking about our political leaders, to lash on things like this and use the opportunity to score cheap points, mm -hmm. right? I mean, like you see with the president-elect, um, uh, with the president. Um, the vice president, the mm -hmm. presidential candidates of both Labour and PDP, and of course most of the, let me stick to the political leaders because we're talking governance, right? But you see, the way 
the way you called or the way you showed up to celebrate Hilda, it is also possible that Nigerians will actually show up and Nigerians will love to engage you to say, you know what, this is a great feat, this is a great achievement. Um, so I, I, I want our leadership to be, to move beyond, you know, this, there's this thing that says um, you want to be seen to be doing something. Yeah. Not that you're actually, you're actually doing, doing the thing, something. but you just want to have the, let people have, perceive that you're doing something. That's how I feel when it comes to Nigerian leadership. And I believe it's because we don't really have clarity of purpose, right? It is impossible for you to succeed at anything if you do not have clear vision on this is what we want to achieve, this is where we're going. So, I mean, if we have never thought about it before, Right? I believe that every opportunity like this are like milestones for learning. Yeah. Right? So this is a major achievement in our, in our great history in Nigeria. Right? A world record. But it's also an opportunity, an avenue for us to reevaluate, you know, what is the Nigerian vision? What do we want to be known for? Mm. Who are we as Nigerians? You know, how do we want our people to live? How do we want to... Um, um, like if we go outside of the shores of this country, how do we want to be addressed as a people? And all of those things are tied to how, you know, people perceive you, the look and feel of your country, starting from the airports to your roads, you know, to your infrastructure, to everything, to power, to all these things that really make up decent living for humans, mm -hmm. right? So imagine if we have clarity and a clear vision and we have a plan, because what Diola said is very important. Yeah. We have a clear plan a strategy, then we then take action. Because all of these things without action is also not going to work. The Bible says faith without work is dead. is dead. Go ahead, Jennifer. You know, one thing I noticed is our government never really has like a proper roadmap. Now, when you have a project, first of all, they'll ask you the why. Why are you building this? Or why is this your vision? Then how? How do you intend to execute? How do you intend to implement and then when? When do you intend to do it? It's not just by saying, I'm going to build this bridge or I'm going to create um, or a mini city in this particular town or turn this village to a full city or a conglomerate or something like that. There has to be clear, there has to be clear plan, just like, um, like Ajiola said. Execution and implementation is very, very important. And when people can see these things, they know exactly what to hold on to. Now, if you just come out and say, oh, this is my vision, okay. The next question is, what next? How do we, well, where do we go from here? How do we achieve it? Now, I can tell someone I have a vision. Now, it's, it's okay for you to have a vision and not know how to implement that's why you have people. You don't bring the right yeah, team. you bring the right team. And then you delegate. That's where delegation comes in. You delegate and say, okay, this person, this is your strength. I know you can achieve this. So everyone knows your vision. Like, like you said, there's a vision board. Everyone can see what the vision is. And then there are different angles, different tentacles. Okay, you're coming from north. You're coming from south. You're coming from different angles. And then when you bring it together and it comes to the midpoint you know that you have achieved it at the end of the day. But first of all, people need to see the plan. People need to know that you have these things in sight. You know what, exactly what you want to achieve. It's not just saying things off the top of your head. Anybody can wake up and say things off the top of their head. I can wake up today and say, you know what, on my streets, I want to start the road. Now, once I come out and say that, I mean, that's a very bold statement, especially because I'm, I'm just a citizen. Now, when I say something like that, people would ask me, how do you intend to achieve this? Now, if you have a plan, people start to ask you, okay, what about finances? Who do you want to contract it to? Which company would you give to bring the resources or the materials that are needed to make the road? Um, for, um, for the people who are living on the streets, what, um, what's the contingency, what, yeah, what's plan? contingency plan? And then the thing is, there's also risk management. You also have to think about what if something happens? If something bad happens, how do we prevent this from happening? And if we cannot prevent it, how do we solve for it? Hmm. So you have to think about different scenarios, different things that would happen, and you also need to have backups. So if um, challenge A comes up, 
how do we solve for it? Mm. If challenge B comes up, how do we solve for it? And now if we solve for it and something else comes up, we need to think. So you have to tie up all the loose ends. And even after doing all of this, it doesn't mean that you're still not going to have challenges. But because you already have a plan in place to solve every likely problem that might come up, when something out of the ordinary comes up, at least to an extent, you're able to, to solve, solve for it. it. Absolutely. But we don't see this with our government, and it's very, very worrisome. And that's why people have actually just lost hope. Uh -huh. And then when you come up today and you say, oh, I want to do this, and people will tell you, that's what the last person said. That's what the last two persons said. So how do you intend to achieve this? So it's like you're just blowing air mm -hmm. at the end of the day, and there's nothing to, you can't even, you can't hold, hold air. There's nothing to hold on to. <laughs> Let me come to you, Diola, because um, as we wrap up now, I was just going to say that, um, I've heard this argument several times that Nigeria is not suffering uh, from lack of vision, um, plan. Mm. That we, uh, we have very fantastic plans, but they're all on paper, right? Yeah. Mm. Um, so mm. uh, I've heard this argument, but I choose to believe that it's not, it's not possible. We don't need too many <laughs> things. We, we, need, we need the Nigerian dream. We need something that we can say, you know what? Nigeria is a, is a land of greatness. Everywhere you go to in this Nigeria, you become great, you know? Mm. That's, it's, mm. not, it's not just I will build bridges and all of that. But hey, let's, that's an argument for another day. But to, your, to you, Jill, as we wrap up in, in about two minutes, right, is a mm. visionary, um, exemplary leadership or a visionary leadership, is it, a, is it something that we lack? And if yes, you know, is it possible for us to get it as a people? Oh, absolutely. I mean, absolutely. Um, visionary leadership. I mean, they're not born. They're, well, some they say some leaders are born, but I mean, anybody can look at a problem and craft a vision from it. You know, it's just having the right people. But again, I also think that, um, in fact, it is worrisome because you know, diversity is supposed to be a a, a strength, a major strength, especially in governance. You know, you're pulling people from a across the nation with different competencies, different skills, different cultural backgrounds and all that. And everybody is supposed to, you know, bring that to, 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 to make something of the national dream. But I think the problem that we have is we're putting round pegs in square holes. There is a mix, mix match somewhere. So it is either there is a vision, maybe at the top, maybe for one or two of them, and the followers do not get it. They are not able to translate that vision into an actionable plan. Because, I mean, help me understand how a government, a federal government, will start an infrastructure on that um, Lagos, um, Ibadan, Bega Expressway, that corridor takes at least a million people a day. And you're telling me that there's no plan. People are stuck in traffic for sometimes four or five hours. So that is, I mean, the cost of efficiency to not just government, to private sector. The government is losing money. Private sector is losing money. People are, you know, they are, they are falling sick. So when governments engage, when they engage third parties, you know, to help them actualize their dreams. Do these contractors, do they, do they even understand what is at stake? I mean, if you have a government that does not even hold those people accountable, they would feel that, you know what, you can do and undo. The government doesn't care. I mean, if a contractor is not even doing what they're supposed to do within the timelines given, I mean, these are basic information that, you know, they're supposed to have at government level. Are they, are they, are they finding them? Are they paying some sort of be fine, such that they understand that ah, if you want to work with Nigerian government, these are people with a vision. They don't joke on this. You can't, you can't inconvenience their citizens. Absolutely. You, 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 you these things, and this is preparing to the bare minimum. Mm. Because when people put up attitudes of, please, it is government, it's government work, it's retirement. Let me just go and be collecting salary. I really well. do not care. Then there's a problem. There's a big problem. But thank you so much, Adiola. We ran out of time. Thank you. 
um, Jennifer. Now, before we go, I don't know, maybe we might continue the conversation tomorrow. Um, and sure you follow us across all our social media handles at Wayshow Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media, like and share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed our quote for today, here it is again. Um, create a vision for the life you really want and then work relentlessly towards making it a reality. And congratulations again to Hilda Bachi um, for the success of the world, uh, Guinness Book uh, World Record. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy. <laughs>